To be honest, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do next for this application. And I think the reason I have that feeling is because we can really do anything. So that being said, the next thing I want to do is I want to start getting stock information. And to do that, we're going to be using this real-time stock API. The link is financialmodelingprep.com. I'll leave this full link in the description. But we're going to be using this API to get real-time stock prices. So you can call endpoints to get the price of a stock at the current time. You can do all, all sorts of things with this API. You can see major indexes such as Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and SP500. And that's actually what the focus of this episode is going to be. So I want to get information relating to these three major indexes. And I want to put that information into like a chart on the home view model, the home view, the main view of the application. So the first thing we actually need to do is we need to go back to our domain layer and we're going to create a new service. So it's just going to be an interface and we're going to call this I major index service. So let's go ahead and make this public. And the only method it's going to have is it's going to be a task so we can run it asynchronously. And it's going to return a major index, which we don't have at this point. Let's import task. And the method's just going to be called get major index. And it's also going to take something called a major index type, which is going to be an enum that we create. And we'll just call that index type. So let's go ahead and create this major index model. So it's just going to be a class called major index. We'll make it public. So major index is going to have a few properties. And I'm actually going to name these properties exactly the same as these field names on the JSON object that gets returned from the major index API. And the reason I want to name these the same is because it's going to help us when we deserialize this JSON into our major index. So the property that we're going to need is we're going to have a double for price and we'll also have a double for changes. So that corresponds with these these two fields. And then lastly we're going to have a major index type We'll just call it type. And then we're going to have to create that enum. We'll do it up here. And it's only going to have three values. So we're going to have Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and SP500. Not S and P because if you do an and, it doesn't doesn't like that so we're just going to do SP500. So that should be good for that little object, that model. And let's go into our service and import that model. Okay so we have our service, we have our models, now we're ready to actually call the API. And I want to put all the API stuff into its own project. So this is just going to be a class library I struggle so much with finding the stuff that I need on this view. So class library, it's going to be .NET Core. And we're going to call this simple trader. Dot, uh, we'll call it financial modeling prep. Financial modeling prep API. Okay, so create that and get our class. I actually don't want this. And let's just create a new folder for services. And we're going to create our major index service. So it's going to be public and it's going to implement our interface that we just made. Make sure you add a reference to simpletrader.domain. 
and then let's implement this interface and right off the bat let's make this async okay so we're just gonna play around with this method for now we'll call the API deserialize the response into our major index and then we'll refactor the design from there so let's go ahead what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a using statement and we're gonna create a new HTTP client so that we can call the API. So you're going to have to import HTTP client. Alright, so now we can use our client to make a git request to that financial modeling prep API. So what we will do is we will await client dot git async and then just the URI to the to the major index. So we're just going to be doing Dow Jones. So we will just copy this. At least just for this example, we'll do Dow Jones. And then this returns an HTTP response message. So we get the response, but we want to get the JSON of the response. So we can say JSON response equals our response dot content dot read as string async. And we're going to have to also await that. So now we have our JSON, but we're going to have to deserialize this JSON into our major index model. And to do that, we're going to need a NuGet package. So let's go to our NuGet packages. And you've probably heard of there it is right there, newtonsoft.json, first thing that pops up. So we're just going to install that. Hopefully we we'll grab the, ver the correct version. Should be good. And then all we have to do is we'll say our major index equals, oh, we'll call it, call it major index equals json convert, which is part of that NuGet package that we just installed. So import that, that deserialized object. We're going to deserialize into a major index. And what are we deserializing? We are going to deserialize our JSON response. And then after that, all we want to do is return major index. So before we go any further, I want to show you guys that this service works. So let's just go into our app.xaml and we're just going to create a new major index service and we're going to have to add a reference to that project import everything and then we're just going to say git major index we can throw anything in the in as the major index type because we're not actually using that type and then we're going to continue with uh, we're going to continue with the task And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put index equals t dot result test dot result, and then we will just put a breakpoint right there, and this is going to be our major index. So we're just going to just want to show you guys that it works. So let's run this. All right, so we get the result, and it is a major index. And as you can see, we have changes, we have price, and we also have the type. So we didn't actually assign that type. That's just the default value for the enum. So we will have to go back and assign that. But these results do indeed match what we expected. So that means everything is working fine. So let's go ahead and delete all this. That was just a little quick test. So there's a few things that we have to do to clean up this service. First of all, we want to set the type to equal this type that gets passed in. Because we don't actually get that from our JSON. And then another thing, we actually want to start using this major index type and call the correct endpoint depending on the type. Because right now we just call Dow Jones every time. That's just not going to cut it. So we're going to create 
the URI up here. We're going to say string URI equals this. And then we're also going to append to that a function called git URI suffix. And that is going to take the index type. We're going to have to create that method. But then down here, we're just going to throw the URI in there. So let's create this method. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the index type, control dot, add all your cases. And if it's Dow Jones, we're going to return, I believe it's dot DJI. If it's NASDAQ, we're going to return, I'm going to have to check these actually. So NASDAQ is dot IXIC. I don't know why, <laughs> but let's see, SP is dot INX. And then by default, we should probably throw an exception, but I think for now, we're just going to return dot DJI. So this major index service. It isn't perfect right now. We probably should refactor this HTTP client a little bit, but we're not going to worry about that right now because it works. So I'm going to use it. So let's go into our WPF application and let's go ahead and create a new view model. And we're just going to call this major index view model. So we're going to go ahead and make this public. And it's going to have three properties on it. It's going to have three major indexes. Going to have to import that. And we're going to have one for each of the major indexes. So we'll have Dow Jones, NASDAQ, and I still don't think we can say S&P 500. Yes, yeah, C-sharp just doesn't let you do that. It's going to be SP500. So it's also going to have a field. It's going to be I major index service. And we're going to use this service to populate these three properties. So we're just going to call this major index service. We're going to have to import that. And then we're going to create a constructor that will provide us with this major index service. We'll move that down here. And we can even make this read only. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and define a function here. For now, we're going to just make this an async task. And we'll call it load major indexes. And all it's going to do is use our major index service and populate these properties. So we're going to say Dow Jones equals a wait major index service dot get major index and then it's going to get the Dow Jones major index and then we're going to have this for each of our major indexes. Let's just switch these types and there we go. And now this is where things are going to get a little bit funky. So we have this load major indexes but where do we call it? So I might be thinking just call it in the constructor, but I don't want to do that because then our constructor is doing a lot of work and we might just want to instantiate a major index view model without loading the major indexes. So what we're going to do instead is I'm just going to create a little factory method on this major index view model. So it's going to be public static. So we're going to be able to call this method without having an index. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a major index view model. And we're just going to call it load major index view model. And inside this function, first we're going to create a major index view model. And to do that, we are going to need a major index service. So that's going to have to be a parameter of this method. And then we can use that in our constructor. And then once we create one, 
what we're going to do is we're going to call this load method that we have. So we can load major indexes and then we will just return the major index view model. So essentially all this method does is instantiate a major index view model, load the data, and then give it back to us, which is nice because then we don't have to instantiate one through the constructor and then have to call this load major indexes every single time we want one, we want a major index view model that's already loaded with data. We can just call this method. So there's a little bit of a problem here. We get this green squiggly because we're not awaiting this task. So basically, we're going to get our major index view model back before this load method is complete. And that's actually what we want. Because if I were to await all of this and then make this a task and make it async, then I would have to await to get a major index view model. And I don't want to wait. I want to call this method and get my major index view model back as soon as possible. And the reason I want to do that is because if I had to wait to get a major index view model, that means our home view model would have to wait to get that major index view model. And then our update current view model command would have to wait to get a new, a new home view model. And if we have to wait to get a new home view model, that means our application is going to have to wait to switch views. And that's not what I want. I want to get my home view model back as soon as possible, have that displayed on the screen, and then load all the data afterwards. So back in our major index view model, and I really don't like this green squiggly. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make this void. And we're not going to await at all. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to execute these tasks and we're going to use continue with. And basically what continue with takes is a callback with the result of the task. So in here, we can just pass in a little function, an anonymous function. And we get our task. And what we can do is we can say if task.exception does not equal null. So basically, if the task completed without throwing an exception, then we can see what the result of the task was. And using the result of the task, we're going to set our Dow Jones property, and it's going to equal task.result, and the result is our major index. So we're just going to go ahead and do this for all of these. Just pass in the little callbacks, and make sure you update these properties. And there we go. So we don't get the green squiggly and we're just passing in callbacks. If you've done any JavaScript, this is very similar to, say, the then method with promises. Oh, and actually, real quick, this should be if test.exception equals null. Because if the exception is null, that means there was no exception. So now I'm feeling pretty good about this major index v model for now. So let's actually use it. And we're going to use it in our home view model. So we're going to have a property. And it's just going to be the major index view model. We'll literally just call it major index view model. And it'll be a getter and setter. And then we'll have a constructor for our home view model. And it's going to take a major index view model through the constructor. And then we'll just set our property to the view model that gets passed in. And then, now that we have that, we need to go back to our update current view model command. And we're going to have to pass in a major index view model here. So we're just going to use that static factory method that we created. And it's going to need a new major index service. Make sure you import that. And I think I am ready to test this thing out. So 
Let's actually drop some breakpoints on these tasks to make sure we're getting the right data back and everything. And let's give it a go. So we're loading up. We're going to click home. Loads the view model, and then we hit these breakpoints. NASDAQ actually hits first, which is interesting. But let's look at the result. Looks good to me. That looks like the API data. We're going to continue. Then SP hits. We get that. Oh, it's doing good today. Keep going. And then Dow Jones hits as well. So we are successfully loading the data from our major index service, calling the API and all that. And now if we continue, everything is good. But if you noticed, it did actually take some time for this home view model to load. Like it kind of blocked a little bit, but I think that was just because it was loading symbols and DLLs and all that stuff. So let's actually, I want to try that again. So I click it, it kind of blocks, but it's loading all this stuff down here. And then we hit these breakpoints. But if I'm the if I were to do it again, it comes up instantly. So I think it is just the symbols and I think our asynchronous non-blocking stuff is working perfectly. So that is going to wrap it up for this episode. We created our major index models. We created an interface for our major index service. We created this financial modeling prep API project that is going to have everything related to the financial modeling prep API and in this project we have our major index service that calls the API and we're going to have to refactor this a little bit we'll see what we want to do when we start creating more API services and another thing we don't really have any error handling going on in here so we will have to come back in here and get that settled we also created our major index view model that uses a major index service. And I demonstrated how we can load data without blocking the UI or having to wait for the view to switch. So we're just using these callbacks. I know it's a little bit funky. If you have a better idea on how to do this, be sure to let me know in the comments. And then we also added this view model to our home view model. And then we updated our update current view model command. And in this command, we are now instantiating our major index view model and passing it into the home view model. We're going to have to update this method eventually because right now we're just newing up all this stuff. So once we get a dependency injection container going, all of this is going to have to be changed. But for now, it's very simple. Next episode, we're actually going to be doing some UI stuff. So I want to display this major index view model, make a view for it, and show those major indexes that we get back from the API. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and supporting the series. A lot of people are leaving comments and likes, and I just love reading people's comments. I think it's awesome. So if you have any comments about this episode, be sure to leave them. Other than that, be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.